Okay, so we're starting on a whole new examination. I haven't laid my hands on this young gentleman, the 18 year old, um, but we're gonna start with his not symptomatic side, his left side. I'm just gonna feel along the costal margin here first, and I already feel a tense slipped rib, okay, right here. Usually just a little bit to the medial, just a little bit medial of the nipple line. If you were to draw a line straight down, Typically the 10th rib will end right there, just a little bit medial to that. Okay, but we'll get him on his side to confirm the count. But I'm already feeling a hooked 10th rib right here. It reaches upward. I'm gonna start back here. <coughs> We're gonna confirm the correct count of the ribs to start with. But we always start with the lowest rib because you can't really count down from the top. Now, the only time this might throw you off is if you have the very rare patient that doesn't have a 12th rib or the even more rare patient that has 13 ribs. So I've got the tip of his 12th rib. Are you sore there? I saw you jump. Yeah, a little sore. A little sore, because that might be a little bit of a 12th rib syndrome. So we've got three three problems that can exist. Essentially, you've got slipped ribs, you've got a 12th rib syndrome, and then you've got a rib tip syndrome. The 12th rib syndrome is where the 12th rib is abnormally pointing upward and it can push into the nerve under rib 11. He's clearly jumping here. I think he's got a little bit of that. What I also feel is how much distance we have from the top of the iliac crest, top of the hips, to the bottom of the ribs. So we've already ruled out a rib tip syndrome. There's no striking of his lower ribs onto his iliac crest, which a lot of patients do have because their ribs are more vertical and long. And if they are like that, they can hit the top of the iliac crest, creating a nerve impingement between either the 11th rib or the 12th rib on the top of the hip. You do not have that, but you do have a 12th rib syndrome. It's very mild, okay? And that is felt at the very tip of the 12th rib. And you can feel there's, if you had your fingers here, you'd feel that there's about two millimeters of space between the 12th rib and the 11th rib. So that's a little bit of an issue for you, okay? So we're gonna work our way around the arch and I feel the end of the 11th rib here. Does this one hurt? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. When you have a 10th slip rib, that 10th rib can not only reach up and poke the 9th nerve above it, but it can also reach down and poke the 10th nerve against the 11th rib. If you think about that rib, it could fall down and hit rib 11, pinching the nerve in between. A little bit of pain there. I don't really find anything anatomically wrong with your 11th rib. It's got adequate space between it and the 10th rib. So let's just leave that one hanging for a minute. But following around, I was correct that that was the 10th rib that was slipped. And in, in this position, that 10th rib has actually gone underneath and subluxed underneath the 9th rib. And so you actually do have pain over here, even though your right side was the symptomatic side. Mm -hmm. Lean back just a little bit. Notably, I usually put the patient straight up and down on their side, but as we start feeling the more anterior ribs, I need to have them a little bit lean back toward me. I feel a little bit of, a little bit of laxity of that ninth rib. It's not bad. I don't think it's slipped. Is there any pain right here? Okay. So I think his main issue is rib 10 being hooked and reaching up and hitting nerve 9 on this side. Might not be bad enough to do anything about it. Let's look at his symptomatic side. So in you... I believe that you probably started off with floating 10th ribs, okay? Because you have the same thing on both sides. Unusual for you to break them both off. We're gonna start low on the back. Feel for that 12th rib. And you, that 12th rib is harder to find on this side. But I know it's probably pretty similar to the other side, so I think it's probably about here. Does it hurt here? Yeah. Okay. Moving forward, we've got the 11th rib, which usually terminates pretty close to the middle of the iliac crest, sometimes the anterior superior iliac spine, which is the front of the hip bone here. So the 11th rib is really variable in how long it is. Sometimes it's back here, sometimes it's up here. But interestingly, the 11th rib is always straight. You never see it hooked at the tip. So I feel a straight rib right here, and you're really guarding. You're really hurting here, I could tell. I'm sorry to push on you. The 11th rib is straight. So I know that's not the 10th rib. Back just a little bit. I mean, I'm gonna hold you up so you don't have to strain. And I feel that 10th rib, same thing, it's hooked like this, reaches upward and it is disconnected 
from the costal margin right here. That's your space. Is that your worst spot right there? Yeah. When you feel things move, is that where it moves? Mm -hmm. Okay. That slow thread is quite mobile. It can move quite a bit. Okay, and I'm gonna move forward a little bit. I'm sorry to hurt you here. Your ninth rib is also slipped, okay? So what I have found, I used to think that there had to be a distance of about a centimeter to create a slipped rib, but I find that the ones that are just barely slipped and they're just that you can move them around the costal margin a little bit, those are the more symptomatic painful ones because they're always on the nerve. The widely slipped ribs don't hurt that much usually because they have a lot more room before they'd bang a nerve. So you're very tender here at your ninth rib, which is your ninth nerve. Just give me your eighth nerve that's being hurt. Your dynamic ultrasound reports that there's supposed to be a slipped eighth rib. I don't feel it. I think it was the ninth. Okay. And I think that it was just probably miscounted because that ninth rib can be really long and it can look like it's even higher than eighth rib as it curves around. It can be really long and that can make you think that you have an eighth and a ninth slip rib when it's, indeed it's just the ninth. So I think you got the tenth and a ninth slip rib on this side. You've got a naturally floating tenth rib on both sides, but if they're symptomatic, we, we could fix them. I wouldn't fix the left side until we know what happens after the right side is done. All right, that's good. Uh, and then just a couple, I'm sorry, a couple more things. Lay flat again. We find very commonly pain up in the inframammary fold. So you see where his just under the pec muscles where this wrinkle is. That's usually where the fifth and sixth ribs come together. And a lot of times people will have a fractured bridging cartilage right up in here. On women, it's right at the bra line. Men, it's right at the bottom of the pec. Uh, those can be really big problems that are mistaken for slipped ribs when indeed they're just higher ribs that have these little up and down pieces of the cartilage that it gets broken. And they can be very painful. You don't have those because you're not hurting here, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're done.